A final in Indiana men's soccer first home conference game of the season. Indiana won, Michigan State won on a Friday night on a cool, crisp autumn night. Austin Platt, Jack Edwards for the Hoosier Network. Jack, an excellent first half for Indiana, kind of like the one we saw against Akron. They were on the front foot. They got the first goal courtesy of Brett Beebe, and it was a really good first 45. That was in the 80th minute, that equalizer, but Indiana nearly got a chance to win the match. A crazy final few moments that included a red card, two VAR checks, and eventually with four seconds left, Indiana booted the ball forward. And and Joey Mayer flicked the ball on with his head towards the goalkeeper, and we thought game of inches it could be the ball crossed the line. That's what Mayer thought, but eventually yeah. referee said it ends in a tie. Indiana avoids losing two straight for the first time since 2013, but they will feel they got robbed of all three points. Austin, IU dominating that first half, couldn't get a goal to show for it. It came down to a special moment from Tommy Mahalik. Just talk me through that. Oh, it was unbelievable. To start the second half, ball's kind of just up in the air. A nice play from uh, Quinton Helmer, I believe it was, to, uh, to get the ball in the air. And uh, Mahalik just kind of went after it on a bit of a half bicycle, a little scissor kick action. Ball finds the, the corner, just a goal out of the, the top drawer. And Mahalik was kind of surprised himself as well. Said afterwards, never tried it before. He may never try it again because, hey, he's one for one when doing it. Approaching the 15-minute mark here in Bloomington, Austin Platt, Cruz Martin. It's a 1-0 lead for Indiana. Goal from Sam Sarver in the 12th minute, his second of the season. Herbert Endley with the assist. They're adjusting the clock, actually. It looked like the referee had something he had to give to his fourth official, so they put 30 minutes and 36 seconds on the clock. Harms kicks it away. Way up in the air. McDonald can't win the header. Two Indiana players go for it at once. That was BB and Mayer. Now here's Camden with it. It's going to have to win the header against the bigger Goombali. Can't quite do that. Here's Sarver once again near the Big Ten logo on the near side. And he wins the foul for Indiana. Back and forth we go here. And we talked about the offensive capabilities for both teams. And right now it feels like this could be a shootout. Yeah, potentially. I mean, we've seen plenty of good opportunities. Uh, Indiana obviously getting a couple of good opportunities, finally cashing in with Sam Sarver. And Akron just a couple of moments ago having a good shot on a free kick. Uh, fortunately for the Zips, goes over the crossbar. But um, expect to see more, uh, more and more shots coming from both of these teams. These are two high-powered offenses tonight. Tommy Mahalik's on it right now. Sarver's with him. It'll be Mahalik to take it, takes it short, and they're looking for the through ball for Sam Sarver making that run. That's definitely a play you see right off the training ground. It was Brett Beebe who tried to tee up Sarver. Almost looked like a football play there. He put a guy in motion and try and get the ball to him. That's exactly what Indiana tried to do. Didn't quite work. It was a nice set piece, too, just a little bit out of Sarver's reach, and, and Sarver really had his wheels turning right there. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody on the team could have gotten that one. Throwing for Akron within their own half. Trying to slow things down a little bit. Mayer a free header just inside the Indiana half. Ball up in the air. Dyson Claypier trying to win it. Four or five players swarming on the ball. And a little bit of leapfrog almost there as Goombali was all over Renato Kowlerich. Ends up being a free kick for Indiana right on the halfway line. Nick Sessok takes it quickly. Swings it all the way over, reverses the field of play for BB. Mahalik trying to through ball for Quinton Helmer. He was off sides. Ball took a deflection and one out, went out of play, but it's going to be a free kick. The third time Indiana has been flagged for offsides tonight. And it seems like they're looking downfield a little more than they usually would. They look like they're trying to leak behind the back line for Akron, and they have been able to do so, unfortunately. They've been doing it illegally. Indiana has been a team that, in recent years, they like to build up from the back. They don't like the kind of back-and-forth play style, and we saw that a bit more on Tuesday night against St. John's, but in the first two games of the year, there was crazy just the pace to it. Big reason why there were so many goals scored, but it seems like Indiana a different game plan tonight. They certainly have the speed on the wings with Goombali and Endeli. We saw Endeli with the first goal. It's exactly what he did down the left wing. Akron trying to possess the ball within their own half. It was Jason Shookalook, the Erie, Pennsylvania native, who went down and actually is going to win a free kick. Referee is going to bring things back a little bit. Shookalook has three goals and one assist this season. 12th best forward in the class of 2020, according to Top Drawer Soccer. Yonash Busta under pressure from Mahalik. Lifts it forward, a header to the left side for Claypier, but he can't 
catch up to it. It's out of play in an Indiana throw just to the left of the Indiana bench. Just reached the 19th minute here in Bloomington. One goal in the good for the home side. Indiana with the lead. Hoosiers are looking for a handball there as that one looked like it went off Joel Sangwa's left arm as Sarver was hunting him down. No call, and the assistant referee was pretty close to it on the near side. And that one looked like it might have gone off of his hand. The question was, was it intentional? Appeared the answer to that question was no. And Indiana will have a free kick, courtesy of Jamie Gerstenberg. Approaching the 10-minute mark here, there is Erwin Van Benekom in year number four at Indiana. Career record of 25, 22, and 13. Indiana with some good possession here. Akil floats one over the top, looking for Bennett. Initial header won by the Huskers. And then Levy can't win it back from Nebraska. This is a very steady back line and a very young team at that, Samantha. This is a Nebraska team that only has one senior on the team in Marissa Papula, who's not even in the starting 11 today. And they graduated a lot of seniors last year, 11 of them, but it's a pretty good team considering the fact that Last year, they lost so many one-goal games. They lost nine games as a whole last season. Eight of them were by one goal, and the three wins they got last year in Big Ten play were the last three matches of the year. So you feel like this is a team last year that's certainly better than their record, which tells you why they're playing so well to start this year. Yeah, exactly, and they did lose a lot, but they've also added a good amount of players. Sarah Weber is only a sophomore and is by far the best player on the team with five goals already on the season and leads the conference in shots with 46. So it's definitely a younger team, and they also have some freshmen. Sadie Waite has scored a goal this season, and sophomore Haley Peterson has also scored a goal this season. Here's Anna Bennett with the corner. Big Ten all-freshman team a few years ago. Header is on, but off of the target. That was Ava Akil. We said her name a lot already. It'll be a goal kick for Sammy Hawk, the junior goalkeeper and the Arizona transfer. Started in all 12 games this season, has played in every minute. An average goals against of 1.5. Ham will throw it in here near the Nebraska bench. Sophomore from Carlsbad, California. Bit too strong for Levy. Another throw in for the Hoosiers here. Taking the 12th minute mark here in Bloomington, Nebraska, an early goal courtesy of a penalty kick by Eleanor Dale. They have a 1 0 lead. Indiana's 10th goal conceded in the last four matches. It's been a problem lately, considering that was their strong suit entering the season. Ham's going to get another chance at this. Waits for the ball to come down. Pressing towards the corner, and it goes off of Sarah Weber in the end. So it's another corner for the Hoosiers. It will be Anna Bennett once again, the junior from Holland, Michigan. She's got a goal and an assist this season. She's looking for another assist here on this corner. Good morning, Bloomington. I'm Austin Platt. As we near the start of March Madness, it's time to take the pulse of hoops in Indiana, a state that eats, sleeps, and breathes basketball. We will start with the Indiana Hoosiers, who could be making their return to the big dance for the first time in six seasons. The Hoosiers picked up a big win yesterday afternoon, knocking off top-seeded Illinois 65-63. IU faces off against Iowa today as they try to make their first Big Ten title game in 20 years. Let's check out the highlights. I'm here with Coach Clavio at the half. Coach, you only scored 17 points four times all of last season. You scored 17 in the first 30 minutes of this game. What would you like? <laughs> the fact that we scored 17 points. Now, that was a nice nice thing to see. I'm very excited about some of the things our offense has done. we still got some kinks to work out, obviously. But it's nice to see us out there and actually competing against a, a good Big Ten team. Your offense is competing, and so is theirs. They get the ball to start the second half. What's one thing on defense that needs to improve? Uh, well, we just got to tackle better. But we got to tighten up because we got to win this game. All the best in the second half. Coach, back up to you guys in the booth. <laughs> 